Right on. All right, welcome to Right On with John Crane. And today I'm working on my follow-up video on the Conso 206 RV. I'm gonna be doing uh, installing LED lighting on the sewing machine. And uh, for a long time, I've used uh, one of those flexible lights, like a flexible desk light to light up the sewing machine. But today I'm gonna install some LED lighting. I got a couple different LED uh, light strips, some 12 volt LED lighting. And I'm gonna attach these LED lights with magnets to the underside of the sewing machine here and the underside of the arm here. And I think this is just gonna be great for illuminating the work. And so you can get a, uh, a little closer eye on the stitching that you're doing and the fine detail work. It's just nice to have that light lit up down there on your work. So uh, also on the sewing machine table itself, I'm gonna install some electrical outlets on the bottom side of the sewing machine. And I'm gonna put a, uh, a light switch for the LED lights on the bottom of the uh, table as well. So let's move over to the bench. We'll start looking at the lighting and the layout and uh, we'll get to work. All right, over here at the sewing machine table, I have the two different kinds of LED lights that I'm gonna use uh, to illuminate the sewing machine here. And the first one I have is just a regular LED light strip. And this is just attached to a plastic backing and it has a, uh, a little connector here that will go off to a, a small transformer to power this. This is all 12 volt DC uh, LED lighting. This particular little strip right here has 30 diodes on it. And this is going to go underneath and go right under this arm here. And this will illuminate the machine right here. And then I'm gonna connect that. This is uh, two LED module lights. And I think I'll put some links in the description on the video here uh, where you can find these on, on Amazon. And so these are just two little LED module lights, uh, three LEDs per strip here, per module. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach magnets I got some rare earth magnets that I'm gonna to attach to the backs of these. And this particular, these uh, two modules, I'm gonna put these under the machine right here and attach uh, rare earth magnets to the bottom. And this will just uh, uh, clip onto the bottom here of the machine with two magnets. I, I think it's nice to have this where the LED lighting can come off and you can service the machine. And with the magnets, uh, that's easily achievable uh, with this cast iron here. The magnet will stick th to that really nicely. So first order of business, so what I wanna do is I wanna glue on those magnets, the rare earth magnets, onto the backs of these strips here. And then I'll figure out from there, after I attach these with the magnets, how long of a piece of wire I'm gonna to need to go from this strip over to this strip and then this down. I'll, uh, I'll run a wire off of the back of this right here, drill a hole down through the back of the table and the wire will go down under the table and to a transformer and over to uh, a light switch. So the first order of business is I'm gonna get some epoxy glue and stick some magnets to the backs of these. All right, over here at the bench and just looking at these LED lights and here are the magnets. I got these LED uh, bar magnets here and these are uh, three millimeter thick and these are nice and strong. But the way I wanna attach these to the backs of these LED lights is with some five minute epoxy here. So the first step in getting that done is cleaning the backs of these and cleaning the magnets, make sure there's no uh, grease or uh, residue or that type of thing. And usually I just like to use some acetone there. Just put a little acetone on the rag here. And just give a, a quick wipe down on the back 
of the plastic here. And this acetone cleans real nicely and it also, it flashes off pretty quickly. Just gotta be careful. With these magnets, you don't wanna get them too close together. You know, those magnets, they'll, they'll snap your hand there like a snapping turtle. You take your finger right off. Growing up in New Jersey, there was always uh, going over to the Great Swamp and Black River. There was always those uh, big snapping turtles around. I remember holding out sticks and those turtles would come right there and I'd snap the end of the stick right off. And uh, speaking of snapping the stick right off, we'll let that uh, acetone flash off, let these uh, magnets dry out. Uh, and at the same time, um, what I like for using, for mixing up this epoxy is usually I just have a little board that I mix it on. And I like, uh, I just like using these popsicle sticks. I like having a bunch of these around. These are great for all kinds of things. I just like snipping the end of the popsicle stick off there. And that's great for stirring the epoxy with that. It gives you a nice little flat edge and just easy to move the glue around. All right, now that that acetone there has flashed off, I'm just gonna mix up some of this epoxy. This happens to be the Gorilla five minute epoxy, but you can get all kinds of uh, JB Weld epoxy like this. There's lots of brands. So I'm just gonna squeeze out a little of each part of this. And this, even though it says five minutes, you got more time than five minutes to use this. I think the five minute should be 20 minute is more like it from uh, my experience using it. All right, so I get the two parts and then very important here uh, to give this a good, a good mix. You wanna make sure that this is mixed real thorough. Uh, like when I'm mixing up West System epoxy, I feel like it always says on the can there to mix this, uh, mix it for almost like a minute. All right, now that I got that mixed up, I'm just going to take a little bit of this here. And just put a little dab of this right down the back of this light here. Now you don't want too much of this because then it's just going to be oozing out all over the place. A little dab will do you, right? All right. Now I'll take this bar magnet and just drop it right on top. Let that settle right into that epoxy there. All right, so now I'll take this, the, the long strip here, uh, these LED lights, and uh, do the same thing. Now I'll let these set up for uh, probably a couple hours. It's probably best to let these set up, you know, even better if you let these set up overnight type of thing. But even though it says five minutes, that's not really uh, the truth on that stuff. You really need uh, an hour or two to let these set up. Another nice tip when you're working with this epoxy is uh, what I like to do is to, the epoxy that you're mixing here on your little board here, what I like to do is I like to leave this old popsicle stick here in the epoxy and then I can come back and I can check the strength of how strong this stick is sticking in the epoxy that's setting up. So don't just throw this out. Uh, keep this around as uh, a little test there to see when the epoxy is cured 
and how strong it is. And you should be able to snap this popsicle stick right off of there when this is cured and strong. All right, looking here at the back side of the machine and the LED lighting, looking at the route that the lighting is gonna take, it's gonna go right here around the presser foot, each of those two LED modules, and then it's gonna run up here and that LED light strip is gonna go underneath the arm of the machine right here. And then we're gonna have this wire run down, come across here, and we're gonna drop down right about here. And I'll put a mark right in line with the slot and looking at the underside of the table, that's a nice spot to run this wire through. All right, I'm over at the bench here and I got the table flipped upside down and we're looking at the underside of the table here and I'm starting to do a little bit of layout of where I'm gonna put the switches and the receptacles on the bottom side of the table. And if I zoom in here, let me take a look. Right here is where I have the hole that I drilled through from the top side. And that LED lighting is powered by this small little plug-in transformer. And the other end of this cord here that's coming off that transformer has this end here. And that will go right through there uh, to power the lighting. I got the light switch for the lighting uh, set up right here, just a single pulse switch in a steel box. And then, let me see, I'll bring you around here to the other side. And right here I have a, a two gang box set up with uh, two receptacles in there. And here is the cord that's coming off of the motor control. And I'm gonna bring that into this box here with one of these strain relief uh, connectors, cable connectors there. That will go in there and that will clamp down and grip onto that wire. And then coming out this side of the box here, I got another strain relief cable connector and this will be the power cord uh, coming in right here. And then out of this box, what I'm gonna do is a, what's known as a switch loop and a wire will come out of this side travel over to the light switch, to the light switch, and that light switch is going to power just this receptacle right here, but this receptacle here will be live all the time, and this one will be controlled by the switch. So when you hit the switch, uh, it will power this transformer right here, which will power the LED lights. And then there's another free uh, receptacle right here. If you want to have another light uh, plugged in, such as one of those flexible desk lamps or whatever have you, you know, on the top side. So when you hit the switch, you can have both the lights come on. And then this outlet right here, this would be great for, uh, maybe you want to plug an iron in, you want to plug a, a bobbin winder into that, or uh, who knows, maybe you want to charge your phone or you want to run a little music, a little speaker, get groovy. So that would be uh, the groovy outlet right there. We'll be getting down with that. So uh, I'll start mapping this out and uh, I'll install these boxes and then I'll start uh, putting these wires together and I'll give you some details of how we're going to wire those boxes. All right, as far as uh, setting up these boxes goes, uh, before I attach these uh, to the under the side of the table, it's nice to do a little prep and a little setup on these boxes. Uh, and firstly is to put in these uh, cable connectors here, these little strain relief guys. So first what you wanna do is grab the screwdriver, 
tap in that knock in, knock out, and then just wiggle this uh, back and forth, pop that guy out. And then take this guy, put your lock nut in there. And I just like to, sometimes you can get a good grip on these things and just get them nice and tight by hand there. If you have to, you can come in here and you can tap on that lock nut there and give it a little extra lockdown. Just tap on that with the, the linesman's pliers. I'll do the same there with the other boxes and then we'll attach these to the table and then I'll start running some wire. Okay, the wire that I'm using for this project here is just a 50 foot extension cord of 14-2 wire. And 14-2 being um, a white, a black, and a ground in here. So white, black, and green. And uh, a nice way of uh, working with this wire, how I like to strip it back, is to... Uh, I like to give myself about eight inches or so of wire to work with in the box. So a nice rule of thumb there is just to uh, use your linesman's pliers here. That's a nice length, you know, and then pick up the wire right there. And to work with this wire, what you got to do is you got to cut this outer jacket. And I like to take a nice sharp razor blade and just so slightly, just run this all the way around in a circle. And you gotta be careful that you don't go too deep there. And you can just start to crack the wire and pull it apart. You can almost do it without going all the way through. And see right there, it looks pretty good, you know, splitting that casing all the way around without actually touching the wire inside. And then, once I got that there, then I take the razor blade and I run a long slit. Same thing, just using light pressure all the way along this outer jacket. And just very, very lightly. You don't wanna to go too deep where you're cutting the wires. Here at the end sometimes, when I get to the end, I'll push down through because that's a spot where you're gonna be uh, stripping the end of the wire anyway. So once I get that, you can start to pull this casing apart and just start splitting it. And then once you get a little bit of wire out, you can start pulling that right down that split line. And then break that jacket off. And there you go. And uh, it's always good to inspect your wires there. Make sure you got no nicks or uh, little holes or anything that you didn't go through with the razor blade. But that's the way that uh, I like to strip this wire. And there you go. You got a, a nice long length here to go into the box. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll cut a bunch of this wire to length and I'll run it in between the boxes there. All right, I just about have all the wires run into this box here. I got this wire here. This is coming in from the light switch there. Uh, this wire here is running over to the motor. And because this motor is made overseas, the uh, color coding here is we got brown is your hot, blue is your neutral here, and then uh, the yellow and the green here is your ground. Uh, I just wanted to show these strain relief connectors. And you gotta slide this over the wire here before you slide it into the connector that's attached to the box. So you slide this little nut over, slide this little compression fitting over, and then slide this through the hole here. And what I like to do is slide this in 
and just have a little bit of the sheathing. I don't know if you can see that there. A little bit of that sheathing sticking through uh, the connector. And then come in and screw down this uh, little compression nut. And these plastic ones, they're, they're okay. On the metal ones, you can get a little bit more of a bite going on and get them a little bit tighter. These, if you tighten them too much, you can start uh, cross-threading these. So, and then it's nice just to come down and cinch these up with a little crescent wrench there. It doesn't need to be too tight. All right, since I'm primarily working with stranded wire here, it's nice to have these little crimp on terminals. And uh, these right here, these are the ring terminals. And these are really good for going down to a ground screw into the back of the box type of thing. And uh, that's a nice solid firm connection there down to the uh, grounding screw. Here's one that I have uh, made up on this ground wire here. And then these are these uh, spade terminals here. Just looks like a little fork almost. And uh, this is great for going to a switch or a receptacle or going to a terminal block or that type of thing. And these just slide on here. And then you can tighten down that post there onto the spade terminal. So just a little note here on crimping these on. You don't really need to strip off very much wire off of these at all just a tiny bit there uh, for the tip and I like to give it a little bit of a twist there and then uh, some of these linesman's pliers are great they have a uh, a little crimping tool built in to the uh, underside of the pliers and uh, you just insert the little terminal a little crimp sleeve there and I like to put the seam right under the tip of that crimping tool there, right? And then uh, take the wire, give the wire a little bit of a twist here, and then uh, push that into the terminal. And then give it a nice crimp down. And there you go. And that's a nice strong connection and then this can go to uh, the ground screws on the switches or the receptacles so that type of thing and we can tighten that down and have a nice connection if it was solid wire if you had solid wire you can bend a nice little hook in the solid wire and wrap it around these uh, screws uh, but since we're going with all stranded wire here running this uh, extension cord material here uh, it's really nice to put these little uh, crimp terminals on here. You don't want to be running that stranded wire, you know, around these screws here. That just never works out well, and it always just seems like something that's gonna uh, fall off or fail later down the road, especially if you got some vibration or anything like that. You know, it's just uh, uh, not a good practice. So go for the uh, crimp on sleeves here, crimp terminals, the spades and the ring connectors when you're doing uh, the stranded wire. All right, here we are over at the box. I'm looking at this bowl of spaghetti here. And um, usually how I like to start these boxes out, and a good rule of thumb for working on any electrical boxes is to start with your grounds. So uh, first you gotta kind of know the map of what's going on with the wires though. So here we got the incoming power right here. So this is just going out. You know to our cord here that we're going to plug into the wall and so we got the hot coming in we got the neutral coming in and then we got the grounds here right so uh the other wire that we got coming in here this is the wire that goes over to the uh, motor controller here so this here we got the brown is the hot blue is the neutral and the green is the ground there and then these wires coming in this is our switch loop so you can run either one of these so this will be uh the power uh running over to the switch and then this white here we'll put a piece of black tape on here and this will be the power running back and that will control this outlet and as we said before this outlet will just be hot all the time on this side 
So first things first, uh, let's start with the grounds. And a nice way to get a, a neat box laid out is to uh, pull all these wires back out of the way, everything except for the grounds. And then gather the grounds together and try to get them so they'll lay down nicely into the box. Now our goal here with this one is to get these to lay nicely into the box and then we got a, a threaded hole right here that will go with a, uh, a ground screw that will go down into that hole there. Here's our, our ground screw and since this is mounted to a, uh, a piece of plywood here uh, it's nice to use like a punch or an awl or something like that to go into that hole uh, to create room for this screw to go down into and have something uh, so it can go you know down into the plywood there. Uh, this particular awl, and I've had this since uh, old Joe Breitweiser back in electrical trade school. This is one of those tools that uh, they issued. Uh, looked like it had uh, 20, 30 years of use before I got there. But anyway, just tap down a nice hole underneath that. So that makes some room for the, uh, the ground screw to go in. The old Joe Breitweiser, he was a character, that guy. Uh, talk about stories. That guy had a story about everything. Um, all right, so that ground screw, and that's just good to stick that in there. Get that threaded in. And push that plywood down behind there. You know, you could do it prior with a, uh, a drill bit there. And that's nice about these uh, Klein tool 11-in-1 uh, drivers here. If you take the, the bit out there, uh, this becomes a nut driver, which is great for doing this work. All right, so anyway, back to the grounds. Pull all the grounds together, right? And I like to hold them all together there. And then just give these a nice snip so they're all at the same length, right? Strip these guys off. Just a little tiny wire running over to that motor controller. And then I got uh, two little ground pigtails here. So one of these is gonna go down with a ground screw, uh, this ring terminal and ground down to the box with this screw, right? And then this other spade connector, that's gonna go up over to our receptacle here and up to this, this right here. So I already got these made up. I'll grab all these grounds here. And this is just nice to line these all up at the same length. Easier said than done, right? And this stranded wire, this really goes together nice. It is nice to give that a little twist like that. Even with the linesman's pliers, it's nice to give it a little twist. Then come back with your wire nut. By the way, this particular kind of wire nut right there, uh, these yellow ones, these are awesome for uh, half inch EMT, half inch metal conduit. Stick this inside of there. That's an awesome uh, blow gun there. You can uh, fire these right across the room. And uh, yeah, but watch out, Get the put some eye protection on there. Those things come flying out of there. Yeah, that was uh, back in the day there, just thinking about that, this punch here and thinking about old uh, Joe Breitweiser. He was my uh, electrical trades teacher, great guy. 
yeah, he would come and uh, this type of thing, he'd come and check your work and start yanking on all the wires, you know, and, uh, you know, testing all these connections. So it is nice to give these all a good yank and make sure you got everything nice and solid inside there. All right. So now we'll take our ground screw here and down to our little threaded hole there in the back of the box. And clamp that ground right down to the box. Nice solid connection there. And then uh, tuck those ground wires down there into the bottom. All right, next thing now we're looking at is uh, neutrals. So here we got the neutral coming in, right? We got a neutral going over to the motor controller. And uh, so that's the only two neutrals we got in the box right now. Uh, as we know, this uh, white over here is not gonna be a neutral. That's gonna be a switch loop. We'll put some black tape on that. But these guys right here, what we wanna do is, um, you know, since we're gonna have two receptacles here. We need uh, two little pigtails coming off of this, one going up to each receptacle. So, likewise, snip these guys. Strip off the wire. Strip off the insulation, I should say. All right, and I got a couple pigtails here already made up. Hold these all at the same length. That's the trick, is holding that those the insulation all in a line together, pinch them together in a nice formation. Give it a little twist. Sometimes it's even nice here to come in and just, after you got them twisted, give this a little nip right there. And then come in with your wire nut. Make that nice and tight. There we go, we got the, the neutrals ready to go. This is gonna go up to one receptacle all right, this will go up to the other one. All right, now on to the hots here. So we got the hot coming in, hot going over the motor control. And then we're also gonna tie in this, that's gonna go over to the switch. So same thing here. We'll hold all these together. Give this a little snip. And snip, snip here, snip, snip there. And a couple of lottie dots. Now we strip the wire. All right, enough of that. All right, so here we go. Uh, right, we got the three hots here, hot coming in, hot going over the switch loop, hot going to the motor control. And then here's a little pigtail here uh, that's gonna go up to the receptacle on this side. So same thing, line up all the insulation there, hold those together. Give that a nice little twist. Oh, look at that, that one was laying low. You gotta get that up with your friends there. Give that a little snip. Go for the wire nut. Right, tuck it down into the box. 
All right. And then this one here, I gotta cut this one off. All right, and this one is part of our switch loop, so I'll take a little black tape and we'll wrap that around this. So now this denotates that uh, this is no longer a neutral and now it's a hot. The wire stripper here and just the tiny bit here off of the end. And we'll bring in uh, the spade terminal. All right. I don't know if we can see uh, on that spade terminal, but right there is the split line. And that's where I like to put the, uh, the tip of that crimper right there is right on top of that split line. And then that gets some nice even pressure down on both of those and crimps that right in the middle. Give that a good crimp. Not too much pressure on there. You know, sometimes you put so much pressure on there, you crack that little plastic casing right off. You know, then the thing is garbage. Um, all right. So now we start looking at these receptacles, and it is nice uh, to start with the grounds here. And so what we're going to do here is I've already put a pigtail on this one here and we're going to loop this ground over to this one on these two, right? And then this ground, we're going to have two of these spade terminals going into uh, one screw here. So we'll put those two spade terminals under there. Grab our screwdriver. All right, nice and solid. All right, this is the position of our two outlets, how they're going to land right there. All right, and then Let's go for uh, the neutrals next. So neutrals on these guys, right? Always our uh, light colored terminals are the neutrals and the brass, the darker ones, uh, that's our hots there. So here we go with the neutral. We'll slide this right under here. These other terminals, if they're loose, I just like tightening everything down, making sure that nothing's rattling around in there, right? All right, and then here's our hot coming back. We got the tape on that wire. We'll slide that on the hot side here. That'll be coming back from the switch. All right, tighten that down. All right, we'll go to the receptacle on this side. And here we go with the neutral. Slide that under. All right, and then we got the hot coming in here. This is the receptacle that's hot all the time. And there we go. That's all set up. So we just got to put a, uh, a cover on that. And I got this cover right here. 
And in order to put these covers on, it's uh, you got to pull these screws out. At the same time, come in here and uh, break off these little Mickey Mouse ears. You just twist these back and forth. All right, and just check to see that these fit down in here nice and firm. Bring in the cover. All right, this turned into more of a how to wire an electrical box. All right, and over to the switch now. All right, I'm over here at the switch box now. And this white coming in here now, we're gonna put some uh, black tape on this. And uh, same thing, denotate this, that this is now a hot. And this is a switch loop. So we got power coming in, hot coming in, and then this is uh, hot going out now to that one receptacle on that one side. So I'm gonna crimp some terminals onto the ends here and then uh, secure these grounds and put the switch in. All right, let's give it a test. All right, we're all powered up, ready to roll. I'll give it a little test here. All right, so this uh, receptacle here should be hot all the time. So if we test that with a little circuit tester, that one looks good. You get these two lamps on the outside are lit up, means it's uh, A-OK -okay there. So these both look good. And then if we test our motor control here, if we turn this on, looks like we're all good, where it's all lighting up, ready to roll. And then let's go over here to this other outlet. This should be off now until we hit the switch. And there we go, we hit the switch on and off. So that's where our LED light. Same thing here on this one, on and off. All right, looks pretty good. And then our uh, little transformer here, that's gonna plug right in there. And then we'll run this wire right down through the hole and to the top of the table there. It looks like uh, our epoxy is all set up here on the magnets. I got the epoxy in there, it looks all glued up and hardened and uh, that's nice to have the little popsicle stick test there. And uh, you can see there, the popsicle stick cracks off, you know that that Epoxy went off and it's nice and hard. So it looks like we're good to go. I'm just looking here at the back of the machine and I got the LEDs uh, stuck on with the magnets. Uh, here we got these two uh, put on around the presser foot and then I have this uh, magnetic strip right here with this these LEDs stuck here to the underside of the arm and I have to figure out a little length of wire to jump from here uh, down to these LEDs here around the presser foot. So I'll calculate the distance of that wire, put some heat shrink on there and uh, tidy that up all nice, make a nice strong connection. And then just looking at this wire over here, I'm thinking what I'm gonna do now is run it up this direction and then glue some rare earth magnets to this wire and just run it right down the back of the machine so here's the uh, two LED module lights here, and then here's the strip light. And so this will be under the arm, and I wanna have a couple wires coming off of this right here, and then come down and join into these two wires uh, right down here.
then slide this heat shrink over the wire. And slide this in here as well. All right, but this is great to have these little alligator clips. All right, now I'll come under with this uh, old school solder gun here. All right, and now I'll come in and I'll wrap this wire around this one. That's plenty right there. All right, just gonna heat up this heat shrink tubing around here, the little lighter. Got this pack of heat shrink tubing. I don't know what it came with, like a thousand sizes or pieces, that kind of thing, but it was some suggestion from uh, Scout Crafter. I don't know if you ever watched his channel, but uh, he's got some uh, great little uh, hand tool restoration type of videos and uh, he does some really nice stuff. But it was under his suggestion uh, I think it was like a thousand pack of heat shrink that you could get for, I don't know what it was, two dollars or something like that. But, but it came with all these colors, but the only thing is it didn't come with white. So I wish I had a, a little bit of white. this wire around. And why I'm doing it this way is just to uh, create some strength around this joint because I didn't want to lose any length on this little section of wire right here. So that's why I'm just joining the tips of those two wires together and then wrapping it around just like this. And that should make a nice strong joint. And for this right here, this particular LED strip here has some pre-soldered little tabs here. There's a positive here and a negative here. And uh, what you wanna do is just trim these wires back just a tiny bit. <clears throat> you just have to take off just the tiniest amount. You, know, you don't need much to connect to those tiny little tabs. So just a, a real small amount. And then just go through a little process here of tinning these wires. Sometimes it's nice just to put like a little solder on the tip of the solder iron and then just touch these. I got these uh, tips here uh, tinned and now I'll just take the soldering iron here and just just tap this until I see that melt in 
Yeah, just like that. And then I'll go after this one right here. Yeah, nice. And it doesn't take much. I think that'll be that'll be pretty nice right there. All right, I'm over here at the sewing machine, and uh, here's our wire coming up from the transformer. And I just turned on the switch in the front, and we'll give this uh, a little test and see how the solder joints did. All right. Excellent, excellent. Looks great. Looks great. All right. Now it's time uh, to put this on the machine right here. Snap these guys on. Bring this right under and right on to the underside of the arm there. All right, looks good. All right, that's looking great. Wow, nice. Oh, that's going to be excellent. Look at all that nice lighting under there now, huh? All right, I think the next step, I'd like to glue some rare earth magnets onto this wire. I have some little tiny uh, round ones. So I'll get the epoxy going, and uh, I think I'll put one right here, maybe another one right here and maybe another one just down low here so all right got the little rare earth magnets all glued onto the wire there and stuck to the machine this is great you can just stick those on there and uh, got it all hooked up and uh, yeah, looks like it's time to check it out and sew a little bit of leather. All right, right on, right on. Look at that. Getting some nice illumination now. And uh, that's going to be great. Just being able to get in there and uh, do some nice fine detailed work. And just to be able to see what you're doing there. All right, some people in the uh, last video there were asking for me to show uh, sewing some leather on this machine. And uh, so what I'm running here is Tex 135 thread, which is a, a good heavy thread. I can run up to about uh, size 207 on this machine here. Um, some people go, go larger than that, but I haven't gone that high yet. And then I'm uh, going here with um, a size 21 needle, uh, 135, 16 TRI there. And uh, this needle has a nice uh, chisel type point for going through the leather. And uh, the veg tan that I got going here, this is some uh, eight ounce uh, veg tan. And uh, put the calibers on there. It's uh, a little bit over an uh, eighth of an inch there. So that's some nice heavy stuff. So we're going, going through about a, a quarter of an inch of material here. And uh, yeah, it's nice to be able to see what I'm doing now. A little bit clearer, a little nicer. Right, and there that is there. No problem going through. Uh, a few layers of the veg tan here. All right. Yeah, that goes through that no problem. 
That's nice there with the speed reducer and the pulley reducer there and the servo motor and uh, all running good. So that about wraps it up here for the LED lighting video on the Conso 206RB or any sewing machine that you want to put that on. Uh, but stay tuned for uh, my next video. I'm working on a uh, leather tool pouch here. I'm doing some wet molding on some leather and uh, I'm just going to make a little everyday carry type of tool pouch uh, that will hold a, a knife, a pen, a pencil, a pair of pliers, and a tape measure. So nice, just a little handy thing to have on the side of your belt there. And if you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up, like the video, uh, subscribe to my channel here, and stay tuned for lots more. All right, right on. Thank you.